Let's see if I can find something... I don't... I don't know. Election Night. Could be interesting. Hyo Shio Young, elegance in her cat-like grin. What? Sure, why not? Uh, let's look for more M1 again. I'm assuming each block has some sort of a theme or something. Is there any more M1? There we go. There's another one. Oh, looks like it's from Mimi. Please talk to me. Oh, boy. Sounds like something happened. Alright, let's grab two more. I guess let's start on M2. Alright, where's M2? There we go. And there's another one. Alright, yeah, let's just do that. 1% um, power after extraction. Okay, so yeah, this is going to be the last one for the day, I guess. Here we go. Commit to extraction. Now extracting Election Knight. Now extracting Elegance and her guy like Grin. Now extracting... That boy. Okay. Let's look at the dates. 41, 41, 45, 42... Okay, here we go. So these are the earliest. Election night and Elegance and her cat-like grin, both written by the same person. Alright, let's go with this one first. Election night. By Hyo Seong Bak. Oh, dramas. I like those too. Oh, it's him again. God, I keep forgetting his name. But it's impossible to forget his picture. Because <laughs> it's the most adorable thing ever made. Okay. Man, I had the weirdest fucking night. <laughs> Once again with the cursing. <sighs> Despite half the security force being pulled into guard polling stations on election night, I was off-duty at the time, watching dramas with my similarly off-duty father. I'm not a fan, but he is. I find him pretty unbelievable, honestly. Anyway, he got the idea from one of the episodes that now would be the perfect time to send a gift to Chief Security Officer Hyo, my aunt, in the same in the main branch. Ah. To say thanks for giving us the worst night off. Not that he actually had anything suitable, of course. He spent like ten minutes scrounging and was only able to find a moderately expensive looking wine bottle we've been ignoring for years. He seemed to think it made perfect sense. Well, whatever. That's a dad logic, I guess. So I took it down the corridor to the main branch, family's home. My father suggested it be a quick five minute in and out affair. No photo on file for the father. But it took five minutes at the doorbell just to get any sort of response. Whatever, it's not like I had anything better to do. A cute maid answered the door. She looked pretty sheepish. Can I see Chief Hyo briefly? I asked her. If it is in trouble. Sorry. She's out right now, she said quietly, still halfway behind the door. Is her husband home then? I have something to drop off. Yep, that'd be him. He's home, but, uh... She suddenly blushed and looked away. Professor Kim is... he's busy right now, and not to be interrupted. Sorry. I just have something to drop off. It'd only take a minute, I said. I really couldn't interrupt... busy... she said awkward, awkwardly, looking down and scratching her neck. It'd taken me a sec to catch her meaning. <laughs> oh jeez, does he mean her husband was doing... I think so. Couldn't interrupt. Busy. And Chief Hyo is at the office, I asked. Yes, she said quietly. Sorry, I have to go now. And then she closed the door on me without another word. It was pretty fucking awkward, but whatever. I figured I might as well go to go try to deliver it to her office. I figured I should at least be able to say that I tried in good faith and all. And man, good thing I did, too. Pretty much all the desks in the main security office were empty, although all the lamps were still lit. Apparently I interrupted her in the middle of a conversation with Counselor Mute herself. Yes, mister, can I help you? She said to me. I introduced myself as her brother's son. It probably could have gone better. He wanted to send you a gift, as a thanks for working so diligently on the hardest night. Or something like that. Maybe with more stammering. 
Yes, she said. It most certainly is the most difficult night. At that point, as if on cue, she got distracted by a message in her earpiece. Oh, don't say that, she replied to the voice in her ear. Are you serious? Are these reliable reports? After a pause, she filled a shot glass with something from her shelf and slammed it back. I will kill them, she said. If you see anyone carrying anything that even looks like political signs, I want them set on fire. Not the signs, the men. Actually, the signs too. The point is, I want them dead, she shouted. Wow, Seo Young is really scary. Yeah, did... Does she literally mean she wants them set on fire, or does, she, or does she mean that as a joke? Because if you actually mean she wants people with political signs set on fire, that is fucking sick. At that point, I was ready to leave, and just waiting for a pause so I could excuse myself. Okay, belay that. Wait, is... Is belay a word? Or is that supposed to be delay? If belay is a word, then I don't know what it means. Anyway, Mute said from the nearby screen, pantomiming an earpiece of her own, Lieutenant, do not murder anyone. Elections with murders in them pretty much always turn into disasters. Let's not do that, please. Fine, fine, no murders. Continue to monitor the situation, she said. Then she turned to Mute. For now, I'd recommend some unscheduled maintenance on the rail corridor the fake ballots were spotted on. Already done, the counselor said. Can we send a team to intercept them? I don't know, said Hyo. We're already spread thin as it is. If we just sent a couple uniforms in... To be blunt, I don't think they could make out the protesters efficiently. It would cause a scene. Really? You can't do better than that? I'm disappointed, Mute said. I expected better. Regardless, I don't think... I don't think they could, she replied directly. Fine, guess we'll have to avoid that. The last thing I want to hear are rumors that the Counselor of Security is stifling the democratic process. That'll really agitate the damned democracy agitators, she said bluntly. I was surprised to hear it from the Counselor herself. I mean, not that I'd ever heard anything from her before, but it sounded surprising. Bunch of idiots. Don't they know that their candidate has already won? What's the point in protesting for Park when he already has the presidency in the bag? Park was someone that Mute considered uh, an enemy, but was going to let run for president anyway. Yep. Are you sure you don't want to set them on fire? She should. She should. Bleh, she suggested. Man, knock it off. Murder is going to lead to rioting. Let's avoid that kind of shit, please. Mute replied, rubbing her forehead. Hey, if you spread so thin, why is he off duty? She asked, glancing at me. I was way past the point of not wanting to be there. That's a good question. Why are you, officer? My aunt asked, staring. I stammered, I don't have a weapons permit yet, ma'am. Well, it might be prudent to get one, don't you think? She replied. I'm not sure exactly what I said. Something like, yes, ma'am, I think. But it seemed like the perfect chance to get out of there, so I excused myself and did. You know, this young Bok boy seems a little awkward. <laughs> yes, he does. I'm not really sure what they were talking about, even now. I didn't hear anything about trouble with protesters, and I've definitely heard no end to family members complaining about Park being elected. So, they were right about that. I guess they managed to sort it out somehow. It sure was weird, though, and I guess maybe I should try for that weapons permit? Alright, next one here, from the same guy. Elegance in her cat-like grin. Don't know what the hell that's about. It has been a rather awfully stressful week, but I feel as though it improved it significantly after my daily meeting with Mute, the day of the first council meeting post-election. As of an hour ago, we've got a new chief councillor, Ryu Hyun Su. The em oh, I know him. That's Emperor Taijo, the first emperor of the new dynasty. He was born Ryu Hyun uh, Hyun Su. In the past, he was councillor of captaincy. Yep. Smith stepped down. Yep, okay, so he did step down. They're going through with their plan. And after a tedious amount of debate, we managed to push Ryu through the vote. It's all official now, she declared. 
Congratulations, I told her. I'm truly relieved to hear that worked. Tell me about it, she said with a sigh. There's going to be a joint broadcast of the new Chief Counselor and our new Populist Bastard President tomorrow. Officially announcing their joint willingness to pander to any political agenda endorsed by enough idiot voters. Huh, so much scheming. No kidding. Jesus. Yep, that's the president. I'll make sure the announcement has a security detail that's properly decorated, I offered. Yeah, of course, Mute said. But man, I think we're actually going to be okay here. It looks like we've gotten through the hardest part of it. Now we just have to worry about politics, not agitators and public demonstration. I sure hope so, I said. I mean it. I think we really are okay. I just want to say, Miss Hyo? Yes, I replied. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Wait, ho wait hold on, hold on. Whoops, I accidentally read those as the same people. Because they both start with Hyo. Those are not the same people. Hyo Seong Bak, that's the guy. Hyo Seo Young. That is, well, her. Okay, whoops. I was confused for a second. Yes, I replied. Thank you. This could have this could have turned out a lot more violently than it did. Look, you put in a lot of really hard work in the past weeks, stopping things from escalating further, she told me, staring at me intensely. And, like, I really appreciate it. You're a great lieutenant, Hyo So Young. Keep up the good work. Then, she offered me a sincere smile, with elegance and grace in her cat-like grin. I could hardly help from feeling warm at the sight of such a charming gesture from her, a woman known for being brutally honest. To hear a compliment like that, coming from her, I knew she meant it. It felt good to be appreciated for all that, and I felt proud. Ah, I guess that's pretty sweet. It is. Aw, thanks, I ended up muttering, without a shred of neither elegance nor grace. I am simply happy things have worked out, without any violence. Well, good job. We couldn't have done it without you, she said. Then she turned serious. Anyway... But it made me feel a lot better about this whole stressful week, to have acknowledgement from her... from her like that, truly. Okay. My throat's starting to take a being, so I'm drinking some water. Mmm. Lovely, lovely water. 42, 45, 41, 41. Alright, so let's do these because they're older. Hairpin or so cool? Hmm. Well, these are both from people I'm not familiar with. Let's do... Uh, well, this one's earlier, April 25th, so let's do this. So Cool by Mei... Chinna? I, I don't know. Chin? Jin? Who the hell knows? Well, somebody knows. I don't. <laughs> oh, wow. She writes really cutely. Does she? Let's find out. Okay. By Mei Chinna. Dear Diary. Ah, today was such an awesome day. I had to work at the family stall in the market again. And that super pretty woman came by to get flowers again. I made up my mind this morning that if she came back this week too, I'd say more to, more to her than just welcome. And the price. And, 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 and this time I really did. And she was super nice to me. Oh wait, I didn't click on her. This is the first time we've read... Oh my god, she's adorable! Jesus. Almost everyone in this game is adorable. Really freaking good art, by the way. Like, really, really good art. Welcome, I greeted her when she showed up at the same time she had for the past three weeks. Uh, the usual then, miss? Yes, please. She said in a really gorgeous voice. It's a little bit husky. And really pretty. And oh, speaking of pretty, I figured out why she's always looking so glamorous. It's because she really is an actress. I bet she always plays, like, really cool characters. She could do it so well. But I didn't find out. I didn't find that out right away, so I didn't know how far out of my depth I was yet. While I was cutting the stems of the flowers she always asks for, I tried to think of something to say. So, uh, I guess you really like camellias, don't you? They're really pretty. I think they seem to suit you, I babbled, unable to think of anything coherent in time. 
Hmm? She asked, and suddenly I got really tense. Did she think I was an idiot? Did I just make an idiot of myself babbling like that? I was sure I had, and she was judging me, harshly. I think I blushed a little, but then she smiled at me. Oh my, no, they're not for me. I don't think they suit me at all. I bundled the flowers and handed them to her, avoiding eye contact, and not saying anything. I'd done enough damage, I thought. Then, when she took them, she held them up beside my face, and I got a close look at her hand. Normally you couldn't see it because of her really long sleeves, but oh my gosh, they were really pretty too. And really clean and smooth looking, and pretty much the exact opposite of mine. She even had really bright red nail polish, and I was really envious of how cool she was. I was still trying to avoid eye contact, but she stared at me as if she was sizing me up. Hmm, yes. I think camellias go far better when contrasted with cute flowers, personally. She said, see? Perfect match. <laughs> huh? Oh, ah, I, I murmured in confusion, but then in a couple of seconds I realized that she was talking about me. Oh my gosh, what a cool line. Wasted on me? I definitely know I blushed more at that and looked away. I was completely, completely out of my depth. And I knew she knew it, and was playing with me. Thanks, I said quietly. There was a long pause where I didn't want to say anything more and embarrass myself, and definitely didn't want to look up, but she just kept standing there. I wondered why she was doing that, and considered it was entirely just to make me squirm. Was this revenge for saying anything at all? I should have said nothing, I thought to myself. Then I wouldn't be embarrassing myself in front of such a cool person. Why won't you go and let me... And let me wither away from shame on my own? Why? Why didn't she go, I kept thinking. Uh, pardon me, she said. But how much money do I owe you? She's really charming, someone like that. And that was the moment I just turned completely and totally red. Oh my gosh, I wanted to die of embarrassment right there on the spot. I could not have been more embarrassed. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Just a second. That's ten silver, please. Sorry, I stammered. And then I had a second crazier thought. If I couldn't be any more embarrassed, then what did I have to be afraid of? So, uh, who are the flowers for, then? I asked, forcing myself to look at her. Is someone important to you? She paid me and shook her head. Huh. Well, I suppose he's a good enough friend. But it's hardly what you're thinking of. They're for the play we're running. The actor who performs opposite of me just uh, needs to wear one in his hair for the third act. It's just not the same without real flowers. If you use fakes, you'll lose your sense of playful elegance. It's awfully important. Oh, I said. I'm not really sure what she meant by that last part. But I didn't really want to admit it. So you're an actress, then? It was unexpected, but I wasn't surprised. She was certainly pretty and calm and way cool enough to be one. I was even more amazed that someone like that could be talking to me. So out of my depth. I am, she said, managing to make it sound so cool, so dramatic. Just like an actress would, I guess. Are you a fan of the theater, then? I turned blank. What could I say? No, sorry, just a peasant. I can never afford that. Crossed my mind, but that would just be too much, and I really wanted to impress her, or at least not make her turn away in disgust. I tried to think of something. Uh, I don't know, I said honestly, but I do like dramas. Ah, well, they're not an awful lot like that, she said. But it didn't sound too dismissive, and I couldn't have been more embarrassed anyway, so it was fine. Hmm, perhaps. Would you like to see our performance tomorrow night? Then, so you can judge for yourself. Would be awful nice to be with. Wait, what? Would be awful nice to be... What are you talking about? Awful nice to be with. So you can judge for yourself. You can see if we embody playful elegance with your own eyes, which are rather pretty when you look up, I may add. I didn't know what to say to that. Ah, uh, well, if it's not too much trouble, was all I could think of. Hardly, she said. What's your name, dear? Ah, um, it's Mei Chinna, I trailed off. Oh, that's a cute name. It fits. Very well, Miss Mei Chinna, she said. Still so cool. If it pleases you, I'll have your name be put on the guests list. It's at the Silver Eternity Theater at 7 tomorrow. I'd love to see you come. Could I really turn down a request like that? No. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll see you there, I said. 
Goodbye now. Take care, cute flower, she said, then walked away. Oh my gosh, so cool! I don't really know how to deal with any of this, and I'm kind of scared to go tomorrow. And I know I'm definitely way, way, way out of my depth, but still. She's an actress, and she was nice to me despite me being an idiot at her. Oh my gosh, what an awesome day. I just can't deal with this. Even if I'm scared, I really, really can't wait. To see her again. Lucky, get... Wait, lucky, get chance. Wait, what? Oh. Wait, what? That sentence makes no sense to me. Lucky, get chance. Huh? Anyway, uh, oh, she's just so cool. She does sound really freaking cool. Hmm. Okay. The hairpin. Hyo... I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Hyo... I... Chong? Jong? Jong? No, it's not Jong. I Chong? Hyo I Chong. I'm gonna go with that. Oh dear. <laughs> what is this, Hyone? <sighs> We're about to find out. This is very long. Oh my god. This is interesting, actually. Some of the changes that have been made from the previous game. One of the big changes is that the texts seem to be a lot longer in general. I wonder if that was a specific decision. Like, Christine Love wanted to make them longer, or if it just ended up that way. I don't know. Anyway. My performance... Oh, wait a minute. This must be the actress, right? Yep. That's the actress. Yep, yep, yep. Damn, she does look badass. She looks really cool. <laughs> it's just so funny to see the year 4041 on a poster. So yeah, this is the actress. My performance last night must have been my worst yet. I got no less than a dozen lines wrong, including the no unplugged flower one meaning that the entire meaning of my speech at the climax was reversed. To say nothing of the entire cue that I missed while I was worrying about missing a cue. To say that it was disastrous would be a dramatic understatement. It was calamitous, utterly amateur hour on my behalf, and I have the utmost certainty that even the audience could tell. And of course, this was the performance to which I had invited the girl with the flowers from the other day, the one I was trying to impress. I would have died of shame on the spot if I could. The one I was trying to impress. Isn't that funny? She was trying to impress her. And the the flower girl, I guess you could call her, was trying to impress the actor. They were trying to impress each other. And I guess they both feel like they failed at trying to impress each other. But I'm guessing even in their failure, they actually managed to impress each other a whole hell of a lot. Like, I'm guessing she probably didn't even notice. What was her name? Mei... Mei Chinna? Yeah, I doubt she noticed she flubbed anything. There's no way. Utterly calamitous. I completely undermined the whole meaning. I argued with the others, pouring myself another glass of well-needed wine. Somehow, even my co-star wasn't taking me seriously. It's a complicated play, love. Nobody other than us noticed it, I guarantee it. They just go off what the program describes it as meaning anyway. Tay Mi said, rolling his eyes, Please stop self... Effacing? I think that's effacing. Still uh, self-effacing for attention. Okay, who's this? No photo. I'm doing no such thing, I protested. I looked to the other girls in the group, but they just shrugged. Before I could say more, the door slid open. One of the stagehands appearing. Oh, is this what I think it is? Is she coming to meet her? Uh, sorry, Miss Hyo... How did I pronounce her name? Uh, I Chong? A, a Chong? Hyo A Chong? Something like that. And there's a common girl who's really insistent on seeing you. She says she knows you. And what should I say? Oh, it is her! <gasps> he asked. Oh, no. Chinna? I winced. I couldn't face her. Not after that disaster. Tell her I'm not here. Tell her that I've died. Tell her that I've died of shame and therefore am not here. I'll say that you're busy, he said uncomfortably. Wait, wait. Who's this Chinna that you're so afraid of? The great and haughty... Ai Chong, scared of a commoner? Tai Mi mocked. Send her in. Send her in. This must be seen. Okay, sir, the stagehand said, and closed the door, despite my obvious distress. <laughs> that is mean, but I think it's going to work out for the better. 
she's not going to have noticed anything. Please, at least treat her nicely, I implored. Tai Mi? I keep pronouncing people's names differently. Tai Mi. Oh, don't worry, I'm not going to be mean to her. I'm just going to be mean to you, he declared. I was about to respond by asking how I might be able to tell the difference, but at that moment, the door slid open. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, she exclaimed, bowing unnecessarily. Uh, I just wanted to thank Miss Hyo... Uh, I keep forgetting how to pronounce her name! Or how I pronounce her name, anyway. Miss Hyo... A... A... Chong? Yeah. <sighs> Hyo A. Chong for inviting me here. Sorry for the trouble, I'll be going now. Come in, come in! Any friend of A. Chong is a friend of ours, I insist, he said. Oh, um, I'm not really... She said quietly, glancing at me, seeming worried. I gave her a sympathetic look. I mean, uh, okay, thanks. I made room for her at the table, and she knelt down next to me. I smiled at her and tried to reassure myself that I hadn't really lost the upper hand. Perhaps she didn't know just to what extent I had utterly destroyed myself on stage. Perhaps. That's a nice dress, he told her. It really, really wasn't. She tried her best to look... well... I don't know what her expectations of what one wears to the theater is, but I'm sure she tried her best. It was cute. It was endearing that she tried, but it was very certainly not a nice dress. He was making fun of her, after all. I winced. It wasn't fair. She hardly could have known better. Ah, um, thank you, she stammered. I wanted to die right there on the spot, or swoop in and rescue her with a clever repart... repartee? I'm not sure what that word is, uh, but before I had a chance to think of anything to say, she just looked at him with a look of amazement and said, um, there's just one thing I'm confused by, though. I looked away. I was, simply, I was simply unable to watch this unfold. I had invited her here, and he was simply going to devour her whole. I had not understood just how truly calamitous this was. I think... I think I know where this is going. This is going to be funny. And what's that? He asked with a smirk. Uh, well... Well, it's something Miss Hyo... Hyo A. Chung was telling me. She said it's impossible to embody, uh, playful elegance if you use mock flowers, right? She asked. I looked straight down. She was just too naive for this. She was going to be destroyed. Of course, he said. Okay, that makes sense, she said enthusiastically. Then, she said the unexpected. So, um, then don't you also lose the playful elegance if you use mock compliments? <laughs> yes. Nice. Wow. Hell yeah. Okay, I just kind of fell in love with her. She is now awesome. <laughs> I suddenly looked up out of shock, and there was silence. She just tilted her head, looking cutely, as if she really did expect an answer. After a moment had passed for it to sink in, the girls giggled. I thought she hadn't understood, but no, she knew exactly when she had been the butt of the joke, and she had just absolutely called him on it, in the most adorable, most natural-seeming way. Oh wow, she's clever. I wouldn't have been able to do that. <laughs> neither have I, and neither would I have been able to. I may nearly have swooned on the spot. I thought I'd impress her when I invited her here, but instead I was the one who was impressed. You're right, you're right, he said, shrugging it off. That was unbecoming of me, and I apologize. I was very truly impressed. The tone of the conversation was respectful after that. She really was naive, it turned out, but after a drink or two, she freely confessed to it in a way that was just the most endearing thing in the world. We explained the play to her, and I even admitted to her, to her just how disastrously my performance had gone even after it was clear she couldn't tell. And her response was simply to smile innocently, innocently at me and to say with the utmost sincerity, It's okay. I'm sure I'll get it perfect next time. It was the sweetest thing. Eventually, all the other actors took their leave, simply leaving us alone together backstage, entirely too drunk and entirely too close together. And I was just smitten with her at this point. I have immensely enjoyed your company tonight, I told her. Without a doubt, you are, far more than I, the absolute embodiment of playful elegance. Oh please, don't be silly, she said. I clasped her hand with mine. I mean it, truly. I declared. 
I'd like to think I had some sort of seg into what I said next, something that made it seem natural, and not just an act of forwardness that would be excessive even for me. But I cannot remember saying anything of the sort, unfortunately. All I remember was staring deep into her eyes and declaring, If it please you, I'd rather like to kiss you right now. She blushed profusely, and I immediately regretted saying that, realizing, realizing I had moved remarkably too fast, and was acting remarkably too drunk. Uh, okay, sure, she stammered, sounding reluctant. This is so embarrassing. It's adorable! <sighs> My apologies, I shouldn't have said that. I don't know what I was thinking. Please forgive me, I said to her. Uh, no, I... She looked down. I'd really like it if you did. Please, th that'd be nice. I raised her chin with my finger so I could look look her in the eyes. Really? I asked with uncertainty. R really? She stammered, trembling slightly as I stared her in the eyes. I mean, if you want, it's it's okay if you don't. I was just, I think, jeez, uh, I'd just like it if you did. Really. Very well, I said. Then I leaned forward, clasping her hands, and gently kissed her quivering lips. And they felt so delicate against mine, and I could nearly taste her surprise. Then I kissed her once more, unable to help myself. You smell nice, little flower, I said softly to her. Thanks, she said. When I pulled away, she was still blushing bright red, still quivering, but she grinned at me. Then a worried look overcame her face, and she looked around the room. Oh no, is it midnight already? Oh jeez, I'm so late, I should have been home ages ago. I have to leave, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. You don't have to say that, I told her, letting go when I realized I really just had scared her off. I'd come on to her too strongly, and she wanted to be a good sport, but... The kiss really did scare her off. What a fool I am, I thought. I'll let you go. I didn't mean to push you like that. No, no, I like that. I'm flattered that you'd even look at me like that. I mean it, she said, rising to her feet. I shook my head. You don't need to say that. Don't worry about offending me. I understand. You don't need to worry about seeing me again, so don't spare my feelings. No! I don't think that's what she meant. Uh, I'm not, she exclaimed. I like you. I think you're really cool. Please, believe me. Then she pulled out an ugly hair clip from her hair and handed it to me. Here, hold on to this. I'm not giving it to you. I want it back, okay? I'm trusting you to hold on to it until I can be with you again. I took it from her, not sure what to say. She started to run away, shouting back at me, Uh, bye for now. Till next time. Till next time, I said, trailing off, watching her run away. Only when she left did I realize that my heart was actually racing. Chinam may be cute and timid, and as fun to play with as I had expected, but, well, I certainly had not expected her to grab hold of my heart like that. I thought I'd be the one to sweep her off her feet, impress her, be the charming one. But all I could think was that I'd surely just given my worst performance yet, and somehow the audience was receptive all the same. And despite the stammering and the excitement and the blushing, I had no doubt that she was far more graceful than I had been. Right after she left, I clipped her hairpin into uh, in my own hair. That's so adorable! Jesus, this game's so cute! I'm sure horrible, horrible things are going to happen at some point soon, but so far it's just so cute! This game is so cute, I think I might get diabetes, because it's so sweet. Okay. Well, one is from 42 and one is from 45. Let's do the older one. That boy, Song... Oh, that's talking about uh, Mimi. <laughs> do all boys swear so much? No. He is an exception. Fuck, 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 everything, hangovers suck. All told, I spent a lot more on that dinner than the 600 silver that I owed Mimi. There goes my whole first fucking paycheck, uh, paycheck after my big promotion. Totally worth it. It took an obnoxiously long time to actually track him down, even after I worked up the guts for it. It turns out I was a lot, I was a lot braver with him while not sober. But even after working it up and asking Professor Kim to get in touch with him, I'd never heard a word back from that boy. After a few months, eventually I gave up. Then suddenly, near the end of my last... What's going on? 
Then suddenly, near the end of my last shift of the week, uh, doing patrols of the plaza, I ran into him. Well, more like he ran into me, knocked me right over onto my ass. I was about to curse him out, but then he offered me his hand and I realized who it was. Sorry, come on, hurry up, he said, helping me to my feet, then suddenly starting to run, still holding my hand. I had no choice but to follow him. I didn't want to let go and miss my chance. We spent a good minute darting through corridors and between shops, and even took a shortcut through a tea house that was definitely the kind of shit I'd normally give someone a citation for. Anyway, eventually we stopped to catch our breath and he explained that he was running away from a couple of men who were angry at him because he'd cleaned them out gambling. I checked the time, officially off the clock. Let me make it up to you. Buy you dinner. I said, in a perfect world where I'm actually as charming as he is and don't choke on my words in front of a pretty face. I'm not even going to write down what I actually said. I'm hoping by the time I read this again, I'll have forgotten it entirely. Edit. Well, that sure was wishful thinking. Take me to Golden House, then, he said with a tilt to his voice. Or a... A lilt? Lilt to his voice? Lilt? What's a lilt? Not sure. Uh, I don't think I can afford that, I tried to protest. Sure you can, and you owe me, and you owe me, big time, he said. After more back and forth of that, I relented. I pretty much had to. Fine, fine, I'll take you to Golden House, but only because it'll clear my debt, I said. And because, honestly, I did want to impress him deep down. Uh, I mean, deep down. I did want to impress him. The thing I wrote before sounds way more dirty than I meant. Me am no good with words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I mean deep down. I did want to impress him. The thing I wrote before sounds way more dirty than I meant. Me am no good with words. <laughs> oh. I love the writing in this game, it's so good. Hmm, western food. I missed that. Anyways, I took him there, and while I don't really know much about western style food, it seemed pretty good to me. He just kept ordering more wine for the both of us. That's enough. That's the last one, I kept arguing, but then each time he'd clasp my hand and say, It's not paid off yet. He could have said anything, really. My memory is kind of fuzzy on what I said to him, on account of all the wine. The important part was that I was trying very, very hard to impress him. So, I got a promotion recently, I said, telling him all about how I was up on the rise, and that my family promised that in a few years I'd surely make it into a really important position. Maybe even guard detail for the council. And then it turned out he didn't really know how prestigious that sort of position is, anyway. So I've been learning some Chinese characters lately, I said. Telling him that we totally did have something in common after all. I may have left out the part where I've been having a hell of a time of it, and even my tutor keeps giving me shit for not even half understanding how grammar is supposed to work. Honestly, it's all beyond me, even if everyone says it's necessary to be functionally literate nowadays. I don't know how the fuck anyone can be, but even leaving that out, he wasn't impressed. I was about to order another round for us myself, but he stopped me. You've had enough, Mr. Security Officer, he said, grinning. Let's get out of here while you can still stand. I'll walk you home, I offered after paying. As we staggered out the door, he had to catch me. What an embarrassment. Oh dear, boy. I'll walk you home, he said having to hold me up to keep me steady. I don't know what I would have done without him there, even just walking the five minutes from the rail station to my home. But we got there, thankfully. That was fun, I told him from my open doorway. I'd like to do it again. You're kidding, right? I don't want to date you, he said, and my heart sunk. I felt totally horrified and shitty. For the three seconds it took until he grabbed me by the collar, pulled me to his face, and kissed me, and not lightly, either. I want you to invite me in. I don't... I don't remember what happened between the doorways and my bedroom. I guess we must have managed to sneak past my father and his dramas, and gotten a bottle of much cheaper wine without it being too weird. Somehow, I guess. The rest, I'm pretty sure I'm going to remember vividly. <laughs> what? what uh, gee, this is... Wait, wait. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. I shouldn't describe the whole thing, but man, hottest moment... He's sitting on the edge of my bed, naked, and man, I've never seen anyone look more comfortable without clothes in my life. And I'm on the floor, on my knees, you know, right where I want to be. Give me another drink, I tell him. 
Raising my empty wine glass, he gets this totally wicked grin, then suddenly swats the glass out of my hand, and in the same gesture, grabs me by the hair. Drink your fill then, he says, pulling my head right in. It sounded like some lame evening drama level shit coming from anyone else in the world, but man, fuck me if, it w if I wasn't all kinds of turned on by it. Anyway, I woke up with him prying himself out of my arms, and the worst fucking hangover in the world. I had to force my eyes open, and it took me a whole minute to sit up straight. Hey, I mumbled. Are you going already? Stick around. Sorry, but I have to go, he said, typing something into my computer screen. I'll make you breakfast, I offered. He just laughed. No, you won't. You're a spoiled little rich noble boy, he said, wagging his finger at me. You don't even know how. You'll just get your maid to do it. No thanks. I wondered if I'd ever see him again. I've never had a one-night stand before. I don't want to... I don't want to, ever. I'm sure they're not something I can deal with at all. And goddamn if that boy didn't do a great job at weighing heavily on my mind. Then I realized that the clothes he was putting on seemed way too baggy for a skinny body. I rubbed my eyes. Uh, those are actually my clothes, I said. Yeah, I know, he responded, not stopping. I just kind of stammered, not really sure how to respond to that. Go back to bed, Mr. Security Officer. You really need it, he taunted me. If you want your clothes back, come pick them up from the address I put in your computer. Then he waved and walked out. I was still way too groggy to follow. But oh man, I'm still excited. He does want to see me again. I'm so glad. I mean, honestly, the hangover is still killing me, and holy shit, I can't believe I spent that much money at a restaurant. But oh well, who cares? Totally worth it. What a weird relationship. But sort of romantic. That is a very strange relationship, but yeah, it's actually really cute. I mean, just look at that picture! Oh my god. That is so cute. Alright, one more. Please talk to me. Oh, she wants to talk. Yeah, what's up, Kyane? I feel like everything she wants to talk to me about is really embarrassing. So, uh, this is really embarrassing to even bring up, but... All these people sure seem to talk about sex a lot, don't they? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, you really think so? Does that mean, uh, that that's something you'd maybe like to talk about? Only if you want to. Oh, well, I guess... I do, actually. I just find it really surprising that everyone talks about that so directly. Nobody really talked about it so casually in my time. Plus, reading about Xiong Bok and Mimi is just so different from what, uh... That sort of thing was like for me. It's really intense sounding. What about you? Do you have uh, any experience in such matters? Uh... Hmm. I... At times like this, I never... I don't know whether I should go... What sort of an angle should I approach this from? Should I just answer honestly myself, as an actual person? Or should I go with like a, I'm trying to create my own character's backstory, and what I answer might actually not be the truth? You, like, am I building my character's backstory by answering this, or should I be answering as myself? I don't know. Hmm. Well, anyway, I'm going to say no. Because I don't. Oh, I see. Uh, please don't misinterpret this, but uh, is there something you'd like to... Uh, is that something you'd like to... Hmm. Hmm. Okay, this is getting kind of awkward. <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, okay, it's kind of awkward and it's kind of forward, but yes with you. Oh, well, that's... that's... 
I'd like that too. Oh my god, this is... Uh, now I'm all giggly again. Okay. Anyway, as for me, it's... Also, I like the attention to detail there. Notice how the text is really small, like she's saying it in a small voice. I like that too. Nice attention to detail. Anyway, as for me, it's... Uh, well... Oh jeez, I'm sorry, I can't say it. It's just too embarrassing. At this point, I don't think anything could be too embarrassing. J just go for it. Forget I said anything, let's just go back to reading together. Sorry. Okay, okay, okay. She'll end up telling me later, I'm sure she will. Trust me, after... I think by the end... I think by the time we're done reading all of these notes, I don't think she's gonna feel too awkward about talking about anything. Because these... these logs, these diaries and stuff are going into detail. <laughs> Alright, there's one thing unread in my mailbox, uh, but let's read the last document first. Wait a minute, what? Oh, wait, whoa. What is... Oh, I'd have to disable her. If I wanted to go back to that. Well, let's just do this. Uh, which one was it? Show unread. Yeah, there's one. There we go. Uh, this one. Okay. Right, please talk to me from Mimi. I'm assuming that's two... Yeah, he got engaged to a woman. Wait, what? What? No. Shit. Okay, this doesn't sound good. I know you think I'm an error, untranslatable. <laughs> but please, just at least hear me out. If I have to beg, I'll beg, but just please. After all the good times we shared together, I think I deserve to be heard out. I wish you could understand. She's just a woman. I'm sorry, you're absolutely right. I was wrong to not tell you about the engagement sooner. But what was I supposed to do about it? I didn't have any effective choice in the matter. It's about money, Seongbok. I promise, it's only about money. Getting by on gambling can only go so far. And with all the morality crackdowns as of late, it's not sustainable. You should know that as well as anyone working in security. If it was just me that was poor, it would be fine. But my family? Well, we needed the dowry. And yes, we're going to have a child together. But only for the money. It's just for the motherhood credit. Do you really think I'm the sort of person who didn't, who'd enjoy being married to a woman? Ah, oh, god, I can't even talk. Do you really think I'd be, I'm the sort of person who'd enjoy being married to a woman? Besides, she needs it too. I don't love her, and never will, because she's not my cute security boy. Oh. I, I'm just taking pity on a poor woman whose family can't afford to support her anymore. And please, honestly, you've seen what she looks like. If I don't take her in, who would? That's really cruel to her. I bet she didn't want to either. Yeah, that is Jesus. If I don't take her in, who would? Damn, dude. She's not a threat to you. I realize intent isn't what's important. So still, I'm sorry that I've managed to hurt you like I have. I was thoughtless to not consider your feelings, but it doesn't mean we still can't be together, if you can forgive me. I always tried to be very cool when I was with you. But I just can't do it now. You mean so much to me. My life is so much better with you in it. I know I'm married to a woman now, but the only space my bed and my heart... But the only space in my bed and my heart is for you, cute boy. Please forgive me. Please, 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 please. I'm so sorry to have hurt you, and I just want to make it right. If I have, if I have to suffer, then fine. I deserve it. But I know you're hurting too, and I just want to make it right. Love? Painfully? Mimi. That is, at once, sad and also really sweet. God, that's such a horrible position to be in. He needs the money and he's marrying a woman just for the, the dowry. And she's probably marrying just so she can have somewhere to live. Oh, God, that's so... Oh. That's such a terrible situation to be in for everyone. Everyone. Everyone screwed over there. She's in a relationship with someone she doesn't really care about. He's in a relationship with someone she doesn't he doesn't care about. And the person he wants to be in a relationship in with is is hurt 
by the fact that he's in a relationship with someone he doesn't care about, but he has to do it. It's just, oh, it's just a bad situation. Hey, one last thing. Yeah? Well, looks like we're nearly out of power for today. I think that's probably for the better anyway. I don't think I could read everything all at once. I mean, this isn't going to have a happy ending. It's important to pace yourself, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's going to have a happy ending, whatever the hell happens. So far, it's pretty cute with a little bit of tragedy. So far, the major tragedies that seem to be happening is the relationship between Mimi and... Damn, what was his name? Hyo Seung Bok, I think? Started out really weird, but nice. I mean, his first meeting with Mimi was him half-naked, or mostly naked, playing a card game with his old professor at a family reunion. So yeah, it started out really weird. And he thought, yeah, it just started out really weird. But it turned pretty sweet, but it seems to be turning into a bit of a tragedy. Other than that, the only other major tragedy I've seen so far, the only other thing that's not just utterly cute is just the whole political thing. With them seeming, uh, with the, the people in charge seeming to want to, and being very effective at keeping the peasants, the, the simple people, as they seem to think of them, um, keeping them uneducated and out of the noble professions. That's pretty horrifying. But so far, it's been a lot more cute than horrible. But it's probably going to get more tragedy -y. We still have two whole more days to waste until we arrive, anyway. But tomorrow, though. Tomorrow's going to be a special day. Are you excited? Um, what's tomorrow? D did I miss something? What's tomorrow? What? Don't you know? N no? Tomorrow is the first day of the Lunar New Year. I did not know that. I never really saw much point in celebrating it for the past 622 years. I mean, it's something you spend with family. But I really, really want to spend it with you now. Aww, that's so sweet. I think if you don't have any family, it's just as good to spend it with the one you love instead. Absolutely. Ah, oh, right. I forgot. You're supposed to have a new handbook to celebrate the new year with. Do you, do you care? I, I don't care. I'll have to be sure to design a new one. Oh wow, that'll be fun. I'm really looking forward to it. I knew she was going to design more more dresses and stuff. Awesome. <laughs> You'll get to see it tomorrow. Looking forward to showing it to you. I can't wait to look at it. It's going to be so cute. Unlike the other handbook thing, which was not even designed by her and was just a symbol of her oppression that she hated to wear, but this one will actually be designed by her. Well, right. Anyway, we're almost out of power. I'll give you a button to shut everything down until tomorrow, then. There's no hurry, but when you're ready, you should press the shutdown button. That's all. Alright, so that's the shutdown button. Let's read my unread message. Repair information, J.R. Robinson. For the millionth time, tune up your deflector regularly. Tune up your deflector regularly. Tune up your bloody deflector regularly. From the damage report you, report you sent us, it's pretty obvious what happened. Your deflector engaged probably a nanosecond too late. And instead of removing an incoming piece of microscopic debris, it just changed the angle enough to glance it right through your primary engine at 0.9c. I, I don't even know what that is. Honestly, you're damned lucky it didn't pass through an unshielded area, or you wouldn't even be alive right now. I see this sort of thing happens all the goddamn time, and it is completely avoidable if you would just take your ship in for a regular tune-up. There's absolutely no excuse. Tune up your deflector regularly. It's covered by all insurance providers by law, and it takes no more than five minutes. I'll do it this time for you, but it's up to you to bring it in for a tune-up every six months. For now, I'll expect to see the White Princess at the shop by February 12th. I don't know how long it'll take to fix, but judging by the damage report, you're going to be grounded for at least a week while we wait for parts to arrive. But for the love of God, 
tune up your bloody defect deflector regularly. J.R. Robinson, Corporate Repair Division, Industrial Star Resolutions, Earth Space Dock. Okay, I'll tune it up regularly. But I'm good for, was it six months? Yeah. I'm good for six months, so I'm good. Okay. I want to stop just to save my voice. I want to keep going. But I think I better stop to save my voice, because I can already feel it going. Um, but, 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 but. I want to see what her new handbook looks like. So I'm going to do that. All right, power down until tomorrow. Good night. Are you sure you want to shut down for today? <laughs> There's two options for no. Yes. Very well, I'll just let you go ahead and save your data first. Oh, I guess I didn't even need a save beforehand. All right, I'll make another one. Cool, cool. All done. Well, good night. I can't wait to see what tomorrow has in store. Neither can I. I can't wait to look at their dress. It's going to be so freaking adorable. End of day one. 12 hours remaining until tomorrow. Achievement unlocked. 48 hours remain. So wait a minute. Do you... I'm back to the main menu. Do you... Wait, do you actually have to wait until tomorrow? Or can I... Wait a minute. Did... <laughs> do you actually have to wait until tomorrow? I mean, I was going to anyway, but... Oh my god, you actually, you actually have to wait. Like, real time. Wow, interesting. Huh. That is a very interesting design decision. I... Hmm. I, yeah, that is so interesting. I wasn't actually going to play it later today, so that doesn't annoy me. I could see that annoying some people if they wanted to just plow through it, but maybe that's specifically what she's trying to stop. Maybe she's trying to stop people from plowing through it. She wants people to think about everything that's happened and digest it for a day before they come back. That's really interesting. I don't know if I've ever seen a game that actually did that. I wonder if you could fake it by, like, setting your computer's clock forwards. I'm not even going to try. But I'm curious where it gets its time from. Anyway. Okay, well, yeah, that is def... I guess I won't be seeing her dress today, so it'll have to wait until next episode, unfortunately, but that's okay. Alright, I am really enjoying this so far. At the moment, it's more polished and even cuter than Analog A Hate Story. Which is pretty amazing. I, I didn't I didn't think the game could get cuter, but amazingly it's gotten way cuter than it was before. God, I can't wait to see what Hyanhei's dress looks like. I really can't wait to see it. I'm excited. I can't wait to wake up tomorrow and play the game again and just see what it looks like. Ah. <sighs> Yes, okay, I've fallen in love with a video game character. What of it? I'm not embarrassed. No, no, not at all. Hyane is freaking cute and wonderful, and I sort of love her. I can't wait to see what her dress looks like. Okay, I'm gonna go. I hope you enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon.